Hey guys, how's it going? We've got several things to work on today and it's supposed to be pretty hot, like 92. Tomorrow's 91 and then the next day we get down into the 70s again, which means we're probably gonna get a lot of wind. I'm gonna try not to think about that. We're gonna focus on some really pretty plants and planting up some pots. We've got the truck all loaded up with some gorgeous things. I mean, look at this color. So pretty. So we're down at the church where we go. The kids are actually having breakfast there with Erin. We thought it would be fun for them to have breakfast and then go play on the playground while I worked on these containers. Let me show you. There are seven containers total, and these are the True Drop self-watering containers that Erin and I had along our east fence line for a number of years. You know, we swapped them out for concrete ones a couple of years ago, and we thought this would be the perfect place to put these self-watering containers because they work really well and it doesn't make somebody have to you know water them every single day and really monitor them super closely they're still monitored and fertilized and checked for water obviously but it's far less work when you have something that's self-watering this is what they look like right here you can see two kind of flanking this opening they're just very simple in design this is the water reservoir access like that's where you put the water uh, this is the little indicator right here they have been painted they used to be a dark gray but you know, when you have them here for a number of years, they do get hard water damage eventually. So we have to start spray painting, but so they're looking nice and sharp right now. There's a couple over here. So all four that we've just looked at are full sun. There's one kind of right in the center here, full sun. This one right up against the building, you can see it gets morning sun, but it will be shaded in the afternoon. And this one right here is pretty much full shade. So I'm gonna keep the container designs pretty simple. I've got a centerpiece for each one of them and then six plants to go around. But there's some really beautiful color and I'm excited to see, I'm just excited to see some color here. So what I'm gonna do, it looks like I need to top these pots up just a little bit with soil. Uh, they did clean them out and put fresh in. Um, so I just need to fill them a little bit more and then we will get plants out, plant them, and then I'll give you a tour. You guys enjoying your pancakes? Did you eat them all? No. Oh, you still got a little bit left. Are you full? So excited to go play yeah they just put in a brand new swing set play area over there so it's been a huge fun thing for the kids All planted, watered, reservoirs filled. Let's take a quick walk through and see what went in each pot. First one, we've got a Skyrocket Penicetum, which is an annual grass, and it grows a little bit slower than the purple fountain grass, but it gets the same structure, you know, that very tall with the plumes, and it has that white and sort of pink variegation in some of the blades, which is so, so pretty, and I love just the lightness that it brings to an arrangement. Sparkling Amethyst Superbina, one of my favorites. These are such, I mean, that's one plant. That is so pretty. And then this is a brand new mini vista called Sangria. I thought it'd be really fun to try a few here, try a few at home. So they ended up actually in this pot and in the next one. We've got three of the Sangria Supertunia Vista, mini vista. Another Skyrocket Penicetum. I kind of wanted to mirror at least the centerpieces in these two. And then this is the Superbells. It's this great punch. Huge blooms. 
beautiful plants. I love the purple and pink. Next one, I used a blue Mohawk Junkus, which I just really tried out last year and loved it so much. And it's got more of kind of a blue look to it and they do get quite a bit larger than what it is now. Like it'll get really full. We've got the Bermuda Beach Supertunia, absolutely beautiful. The Whiteout Superbina, these get huge, <laughs> like huge. And I wanted to put it kind of close to the black railing because I think it'll really contrast and show up. We've got this Super Bells right here that the name is evading me right now, but it is a double and it's gorgeous. And then the Supertunia Mini Vista Violet Star. A lot of purple and pink, except Next one, I did use some yellow and I love this. It looks so simple yet so striking. So again, the Blue Mohawk Junkus. And then we've got the Mini Vista Indigo right here, which this one will take on different colors. Usually you'll see this darker purple, a light lavender, and then almost like a silvery color on the same plant. So it always looks like there's more than one type of petunia in there, which I'm excited about. And then the Goldilocks Rocks Bidens, which this is the first year that I have really, like this is the best it's ever looked. And I mean, just to start off with, they usually fare pretty well here. They like the heat, they like the sun, but usually when I'm planting, they're, they're so small and they don't have very much color, but I swear the flowers are different this year. Like they are bigger and bolder and beautiful. They're so fluffy. I think the blue and the yellow look great together. Next one, another sun loving arrangement here. We've got a purple fountain grass. I only used one of them in here this year. They just get so big that I decided to use in most of them things that stayed just a little bit more tidy, but I wanted to still have that interest somewhere because the color is beautiful. Around it, we have the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, another Goldilocks Rocks Bidens, a Superbina Imperial Blue, another fave right here, such a good performer. And then another Super Bells, great punch, right? I think that's a really pretty blend. And then the part shade container here, I did a huge mix of things. Three different colors of coleus. We have the uh, Newly Noir, so super deep, Lime Time, and the Cherry Brandy. All of these will get huge. Like you would only need to use one in here, but I kind of want this to be like a huge spectacular display. A new Surefire Begonia called Cherry Cordial. We used some down at the college as well. And I'll probably plant some at home, so it'll be fun to see what they do in every location. We use some Terenia. This is the large, it's a Summer Wave Large Violet, I think. And this is a good one for a shady location if you want a spilling plant that has some color, this is a good option. We've got a Diamond Frost Euphorbia, which it does say sun on their tags, but they are fairly shade tolerant. And then a Licorice Splash Helichrysum. These usually get massive. I purposely located that one on the back side of the pot where it's gonna get more shade because it'll keep the growth in check. If not, if you put those in sun, they like huge, like a shrub. And then this one, I use very similar plants, the Cherry Cordial, Surefire Begonias, Lime Time Coleus, Newly Noir, the Diamond Frost, the Terenia. But the only two differences here, I did the Elbrido, which I love that color. And it actually takes on because the color blaze coleus they can take sun or shade the more sun it gets the more vibrant and more like on the warm side of the color spectrum it is the more shade it gets the more coral it is like the the cooler the colors are kind of makes sense and then we've got a sweet potato vine calls geez i should have looked at all the tags i can't remember it's a newer one and it's got a very interesting shaped leaf i don't know if i like this one yet we're gonna see how it does here in this shaded location Usually sweet potato vine can handle shade and or sun. In shade, they don't need quite as much water, but it'll be interesting to see what that one does. And we are done, dude. You ready to roll? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Where'd your shoes go? Where are your shoes? Let's go find them, come on. Okay, now we are heading home and we'll start the rest of our projects. All right, guys, it is a new day. We are out on the new property getting ready to fill up a bunch of planting space that Aaron tilled up. He tilled us two 250 foot rows out here. We've already planted quite a lot, which we'll walk through this here in a second. This is the area we're gonna be focusing on. We've got 175 feet times four because we'll do four rows here. And we've got some things we started from seed. We've got clary sage, we've got some pepper plants. Uh, we've got some Cracker Jack marigolds right here. We've got some sweet potato slips and a basket full of seeds. This space has kind of changed a little bit from what I initially thought I was gonna be doing out here. At first I thought, let's just till one long row and I wanna plant the whole thing in sunflowers just to line the fence. How pretty would that be? 
but then you know you pick up other things along the way or you run out of space uh, in your cut flower garden and you need to have room for other things i completely forgot to seed any cosmos in the cut flower garden that's kind of an important one they're amazing fillers and they're huge plants so they'll be perfect out here anyway uh so it's kind of turning into a super fun space. Let's walk through real quick and give you an update on how these crops are doing. We've got candy onions right here looking great. They're starting to bulk up, everything is. We've got Walla Walla onions here. There's a uh, yellow sweet Spanish right here. We've got Newburgh onions, just a small section. We have a little bit of both of these varieties up in our raised bed garden as well. And then I ran out of big tags. We've got a little one right here. It says Zabrun shallots. And then we've got Ed's red shallots right here. And then we have our potato section, which our first section, which is the biggest one, is of huckleberry golds. And they are coming up along with weeds, which we're not super worried about out here. That's the beauty of this space. Those potatoes in particular didn't have super strong eyes. I mean, they had eyes, but they hadn't started to form or started to sprout or anything like that. So I think they're just behind the others just for that reason. They're an amazing potato. So that huge section, and then look at all the rest of them. My goodness, we've got purple Vikings, huge potatoes, heavy yields, Kennebecs, we've got red Pontiacs, Yukon Golds, German Butterballs, red Lesotas looking nice and big right there. Russet Burbanks, we've got a little extra space. We're gonna be filling in that space with extra peppers, which we already have a bunch of planted right here. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 21 there already. It's a lot. And then we skipped a little space, so we had a little walking path, and we started in with tomatoes, which we've got a whole bunch of. You can see Paul and Bethany put together all these tomato frames. I was short, too, so I picked up two down at the garden center. It's still in the back of the truck. I need to go get them. So the tomato section ends here, and then there's another little walking path. And then we started in, you can see right here where I teed off for water. The last part of both of these rows are all vine crops. So we've got 21 hills of pumpkins and squash out here. Totally forgot to plant cantaloupe seed. So I've got some Tuscany seed in my purse actually. <laughs> I've got just stuff everywhere that my mom gave me when we were out at their house the other night. So I'm gonna find spots for maybe two hills of those out here possibly. I'm actually thinking I can plant the two like kind of on the end of these rows and let them sprawl out this way. But this is the end of our row and looking back you can see back toward the high tunnel and the gator. This is what we're focusing on mainly. I actually bought one of those Earthway, I think it's an Earthway brand. There's no, there is an Earthway brand but I think we ended up getting a Chapin. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's one of those uh, cedars, you know, it has a little hopper and it has different size plates. So when we initially thought this is going to be a huge sunflower row, I thought, well, I don't really want to go along for a thousand feet planting sunflower seeds if I could just fill up a cedar and just walk along and have them drop the seeds where I need them to. So I did get one of those, but I don't know that it's going to be worth actually using because I'm going to be stopping and changing what crop we're planting so often out here. I don't know, we'll hang on to it until a year we plant a huge, huge section of that, of sunflowers or corn or something like that. And popping over to the high tunnels, oh, the wind did get after some of this stuff. We just have a lot of plants left in here for, uh, we gotta go back down to the college. We've got a few other projects around town we're gonna be working on. There, everything's looking so pretty. And then I do have a lot of pots still around our own house to fill. I usually try to tackle those last because I like to get our community stuff kind of going so people have something pretty to look at. I think I'd like to start with our clary sage first. One of you guys sent this seed to me. It was from the gardens at Monticello, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, it's been growing beautifully, but I think it would love to be out. And it would be nice to have some pretty color. So if we have the clary sage first, and then the marigolds, and then possibly the sweet potatoes, and then we'll start other things beyond that. I'm gonna go along and sprinkle some Biotone starter fertilizer on the entire area first. After I'm done getting all the plants in the ground, I'll stop so we can take a look and then we'll go through some of our seeds, uh, which is primarily, I think I already said, but corn, sunflowers, cosmos.
are in the ground. I wanna show you how far we got here in a second, but I took a break right after I got done with that to run and water the greenhouse. And then I went in to eat some lunch. And in that time, Aaron set up our cedar for us. And I do think it's gonna be quite nice to use it because we still have 140 feet roughly of row to plant. And this thing is supposed to make your furrow drop the seed and cover it all in one step. So I don't ever have to get down and actually hand plant the seeds, which, you know, in small spaces, that's fun. And, and I don't mind it at all, but in great big rows, it's gonna be so nice. It'll make it so fast. But also while we were in there having lunch, another box from Heirloom Roses showed up. We've got four more to add to our cut flower garden. We've got a Lady of Shallot, which has lots of nice leaves. And these, I know they look kind of like sad at the moment because there's no leaves, but super nice green stems and leaf buds. Um, so once we get them in the ground, I think we'll be fine. But we've got a Betty White, a Dark Desire, and Honey Sweet. So when we're all done out here, I'm going to unwrap the roses, get them watered in. I don't think we'll have time to plant them today, but that'll be a project for another day this week. And here's what we've got planted. Cracker Jack Marigolds on this side, Clary Sage on this side, and also Sweet Potatoes on that side. Uh, these rows are very wide. They're way wider than our rows in the cut flower garden. I like to plant things in blocks typically. So I like the rows to be more narrow so I can stand on just one side of the row if I want and harvest all the blooms instead of having to go from one side to the other, which is what happens when you have a little bit too wide of a row out here, which is a little bit of a different setup situation. So I think this, this will work out well. I did drag the hose out and I got these things watered in. Now this is kind of perfect. You can see I pinched the water the drip tape together for the sweet potatoes because they are a lot heavier water users. I don't feel like they would get enough water if I just planted, you know, one plant along one row of the drip tape. So this way I've got two emitters at every single plant. And I know they don't look like much now. It's kind of crazy. When you get them as slips, they look like these little scrawny things with barely any roots but they usually take off really fast and they can just vine all over the place out here. And I had 28 of those slips. I think the bundle was only supposed to be 25, so score. I think what I'm gonna do on this side is we'll have Cosmos because they are shorter than the corn and sunflowers. And then right at the end of the potatoes here, and Cosmos will probably take off with sunflowers and then corn. I'm gonna leave one section of space open because I wanna successively plant the corn. I wanna do one crop today and then we'll plant more in two weeks. So I've got a longer harvest. Oh, the breeze today, I'm telling you what. And then we got more peppers planted. And I think that's all the space I'm gonna take up. It's kinda of nice to have a little space to walk between the potatoes and peppers. Okay, without ever using this type of cedar before, I'm gonna do my best to try to explain how it works. So this is what it looks like right here. Uh, this is the hopper for seeds. And this little pouch has different seed plates. There's six of them, I think. So they look like this. You can see where, you know, some are for smaller seeds, like when we do the Cosmos today, they'll be in a smaller plate while some of them are like, they'll accommodate big giant seeds. There's a little chart in here. It tells you which plate and what type of seeds they can accommodate. So like today we're gonna to be planting sweet corn, which says plate number four, and then sunflowers are plate number three, and then little seeds like um, carrots, cauliflower, celery, kale, spinach, etc., is plate number six. And I think that's where Cosmos will fit in. So sweet corn first, we're gonna do disc number four, and you just stick it in here and line it up with this little knob that comes out. And it should just slide on if I line it up proper. Hang on. Hard to do one-handed. There we go. Yeah, it spins around like that as you move forward. And then when we put our seed in, max fill is right to this point right here. You can't put like a tremendous amount. You don't want to fill it all the way to the top. And then down here, this is where we adjust how deep the furrow goes. So to do that, you pull this little lever out. There we go. So see that? You can do planting depth up to two and a half inches. We're gonna go at half inch for our corn right here. And then you just tighten this down. Okay, that should be good. So this part right here does our furrow. Then the seed comes out through here and then this fills it back over. This right here is a little kickstand. So when we get ready to use it, whoa, <laughs> hold on. Then we will uh, put that up in a resting up position. And then this thing right here is a row marker. Oh, let's see, there we go. So this little thing right here, you can adjust depending on the spacing of your rows. So as you're cruising along and seeding this row right here, it'll make a mark where you want your next row to be. 
Um, so you can kind of keep a straight line and the correct di distance rather between um, your rows of whatever you're planting. But if you don't want to use that, you don't have to. It just clips right up in place. And I think that that's how it goes. We're going to just try this out. I think I'm going to just seed a little bit of space and then dig around in there and see what it looks like and see if the corn looks like it's spaced properly and all of that. It should be based on everything here. And I think Erin got this online, maybe on Amazon. I'm not sure, I think so. My parents' garden center used to carry these, but it's one of those items that's a little bit hard to justify if you've got a regular size garden, like your home gardener. But once you start doing something that's a little bit bigger, then it seems like it's, it's more worth it. But there's not a tremendous amount of people doing that. I would say that most people have just normal size gardens or raised beds, in which case you wouldn't need something like this. Okay, let's track down our corn seed. Ambrosia, by color, 75 day deliciousness. Oh, I think I have just about the right amount here. I'm excited to give this a try. All right guys, I've gone about, I don't know, six feet or so. And I pawed around in here just to see what was going on. Check it. One, two, three. Oh, that's so exciting. So it just makes this little line right here. All the seeds are buried. I did decide to try this little plate out, even though I kind of know where the row needs to be, just to try it out. So I'm not gonna go too much further because I want to be able to have four full rows so they're planted in a block, so pollination is really high. So I'm gonna go a couple more feet and then turn around and do the rest of these. That took about three minutes. Corn is done. I can't even believe it. It's nice. You can see exactly where you planted. It kind of just tamps it down for you. So I went, let me step it off. One, two, three. About 36 feet times four. It's quite a bit of corn. Oh, Aaron's mowing. I did notice that at the very end of each one of the rows, it did drop a few extra kernels, a few extra seeds. But I think overall, the seed waste is very, very minimal. And I think that's because it's putting one seed in each hole instead of two, which, you know, if you have older seed, you might wanna run over it a couple of times so that it seeds a little bit extra in case your germination rate is a little bit lower. If you have fresh seeds, you're probably just fine. I mean, we'll see how this stuff comes up. Um, yeah, we'll see how evenly it comes up. I have had this seed since last spring. It's not new this year, but typically we have pretty good germination with it anyway. But I would have used that whole entire lot of seed in probably a much smaller space if I was hand seeding it. And I have leftover. Like this will get, get us a good portion of the way with our next crop of corn. So I'm gonna put a marker right here and then I'm gonna leave about that much space again empty and we'll come along and plant that later. Oh my gosh. Oh, this makes the project so much easier. Now I'm gonna take this hopper over and dump these seeds out. You're supposed to wipe the hopper out between each type of seed, probably just to keep all the mechanism all clean and not get anything jammed up in there. I would say this is a really good help right here. If you're in the position where it's a little bit too much to hand seed, but not enough to like have a tractor to do it. The seed plate was not easy to get out. In fact, I asked Aaron to come over here because I was afraid I was gonna break something if I tried to force it. And he had to mess with it for quite a long time too and said it just is kind of a matter of getting the right leverage. But we did get it out so that I could put uh, seed plate number three, yeah, disc number three in for our sunflowers. But I wanted to show you a few of the varieties that we're gonna be planting today. Florette just sent out a box full of seeds and uh, dahlia tubers, which is really exciting. And then we've got some really interesting varieties from Sunflower Steve, um, two of which don't have release dates until next year and the year after. So first of all, one of the seeds that Florette sent out was the Sparky Sunflowers. And then uh, Sunflower Steve, I've got three different pouches here. This is a 2025 release, the Marley Mix. Look at how gorgeous these flowers are. 
I cannot wait to see them in real life. And then we've got some Van Gogh's Fantasy Lemon Drop Mix, which has a 2024 release date on it. It's just a mix of beautiful yellow, some really fluffy ones, some traditional looking ones. And then I've got one, this was actually from sent over last year, Van Gogh's Fantasy Sunflower Mix. So I think this is the same thing. I felt horrible last year. He sent some out and then I could not find them. <laughs> I couldn't find them anywhere because you know, I'm not used to looking for my seeds in like little pouches like this. And so I think I just over, maybe overlooked them when I got ready to plant sunflowers. Anyway, they turned up when I did uh, my big studio cleanup this last winter. So I was thankful for that. And then we've got some other like pro cut peach I've never planted before. Uh, we've got some classics like sunspot, which are shorter, but have huge flowers. We've got autumn beauty, which is a mix of beautiful autumn colors, velvet queen or dark red, a few others. We've got buttercream, which is a branching type. Pro Cut Plum, which is always the first one to bloom for me. Pro Cut Gold Light. The Pro Cut series, you guys, they're a single stem sunflower, which can be a little bit of a bummer, but they're also uh, pollenless. So if you're using them for cutting, they're a nice size sunflower. They're not too enormous. Enormous flowers are hard to deal with in bouquets, like dinner plate dahlias. Beautiful in the field, hard to deal with in arrangements. Same for sunflowers. Uh, but the fact that they don't have pollen, they're not gonna make a mess all over the surface that you put them on is really nice. Pro Cut Lemon, and I think that's it. I have so many sunflower seeds, but I just wanted to try out a few new ones this year. So I think we'll go with the Van Gogh Fantasy Sunflower Mix first. sunflowers are in they start right again at the end of where the sweet potatoes are planted I didn't get every variety in I think I skipped the sun spots I did all the taller ones because I think you'll be able to see them over the fence better but for all of the sunflowers and corn in this whole section it took just I don't know between 30 and 40 minutes and the thing that took the most amount of time was just getting the new seeds loaded into the hopper like walking the cedar back which I didn't have to walk it all the way back there but uh, there was extra seeds almost every time left over because it just is more efficient at how many seeds it's planting versus when I'm doing it myself. So I'd have to empty the hopper, which there's a way you can do that, and then swap for the new seeds. So anyway, I'm really happy with that. I thought it was gonna take me all day. So what we have left is from this tag right here, just on this side of the row. So these two rows of drip tape up to where the marigolds are planted and this we're gonna do in Cosmos. And I have several different varieties I wanna plant, but I'm gonna mix them, just mix the seed based on the average size of the plant. So we're gonna do one section that has larger Cosmos and one section that has smaller. This is our section that stay like roughly two feet, maybe between two and three feet tall. There's Xanthos, uh, Zinnia, Zinnia double click blend. And then we've got some tall ones. There's the Epricotta, which is the 32 to 42 inches. And we'll just mix those in with the Cupcakes Blush, which grow 40 to 50 inches and Sensation, which are taller as well. I imagine this part's gonna take me about five minutes. I did swap for the smallest disc right here. And the second time taking the plate out was way easier. I don't know what it was the first time, but instead of having this facing away from me, I had the disc facing toward me and I, maybe that gave me the correct leverage. I don't know. It was way easier. And Cosmo seeds we want to just barely cover. So while I had the sunflowers and corn set to half inch, I'm gonna set this one on about an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna go in between the quarter inch marker and the zero, right about in there. All right guys. Cosmos are done. I did three rows just because, I don't know, I had a little bit extra seed in the hopper. I asked Erin to turn on the water just a second ago and you can see it's starting to soak out already, but you can see the three rows. So I planted these two rows of drip just like I do in our other garden, in the cut flower garden over there. Uh, these though, the sweet potato vines will just like come out all over the place. So I don't really know what to expect there. I should probably put like a ranch panel up so they can 
grow up. Oh, this is just so encouraging to me, you guys. I really did wanna see how long it took the drip, the water to reach the end. It's been on for about three minutes. Let's see, it looks like it's all watering. And we didn't have any blowout, so that's good. See all the little wet spots there? I don't have a hose long enough to reach out here to water in the seed, so I'm hoping that this proves sufficient. Oh yeah, it's watering all the way to the end. Awesome. It might take it a little bit longer when I have these rows of drip on. I turned those off because clearly it watered this morning and they don't need the extra water. So even though if it takes six minutes to reach the end, that's not bad. I gotta tell you guys, that cedar is awesome. I mean that for this application in particular is a bit of a game changer, to be honest. I mean, what took me a total, of, well, I mean less than an hour to plant would have probably taken me like four and it would have been up and down on my knees and that's just hard on your body after a while. And this soil out here, if that's what you can call it. It's like that powder that just absorbs the heat and it bakes you from underneath your shoes. It's weird. It's like the hottest dirt I've ever stood on. Um, and there is some moisture in it, even though it doesn't look like it. It does hold the moisture pretty well. We did get a little bit of rain last night, which was great. But yeah, just saving your body from the up and down all the time is awesome. Now I just need to get something just like that that you can walk behind that'll plant little plant plugs. That would be amazing. So this area is officially planted and this is the first project that I was like, you know what, I need to get on that because this weekend when we were driving around, we had several places we had to go and be at this weekend. Um, I kept seeing all the corn in the fields and it was like eight inches tall and I thought I haven't even got mine in the ground yet. I need to do that. But you know what, some years I'm planting in June. I remember planting the first cut flower garden with sunflowers. I did a whole 60 by 40 section with just sunflowers. It was glorious, it was beautiful. But I was planting that area in June. So, you know, getting it done a week before, more than a week before the end of May is pretty good. So anyway, the only thing I'm gonna need to do here is make sure to keep these moist enough for the seeds to germinate and come up, which might mean based on the weather, you know, if it's windy like it was the first part of today, we'll probably need to turn the drip on twice just for a short amount of time, just enough to saturate that very top layer of soil where the seed is. And then once they get up and grow and we can reduce the amount of water that we're using. And then fertilizer, I did do biotone. It took two full bags to do the full length. Uh, I did one bag per side. Uh, so again, that's 175 feet. So I thought that was pretty good. And I had enough to sprinkle in the pepper area that I planted today. And honestly, I didn't even need to use the fertilizer now that I'm thinking about it in the sunflower section. Sunflowers are super tough. They are not fussy about soil. In fact, they don't want too rich of a soil, but I didn't go too heavy, so they should be all right. And I give this garden cedar high ratings at this point. And I'm not going to give it my full like thumbs up yet until we see how the seeds come up. And I know that some of it has to do with climate and water and all that, all that business, but I'm talking like seed spacing. How did it space the seeds? Did it do a good job? Um, was it full coverage? You know what I mean? Like did it skip sections? So I think we'll be able to tell a lot more once we start seeing some seeds emerge, which should happen quickly now that it's so warm out. Anyway, guys, that is it for today. Super happy to have this project done. You will see this area several times throughout the season as we give updates and start harvesting. It's going to be awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.